Hey, Flimsy Lunch Tray here, and welcome back to our How to Map series. It's good to have you with us today. Uh, for those of you who have been following along in this series, or maybe if you're new here, uh, today we're going to be discussing the map Big Race, uh, one of the smaller maps in World of Warships, and where we go through and we break through down uh, the map, and we talk about positioning, and we look at each of the classes um, for the map Big Race, um, and then uh, we do this over six videos. So today's video is part five, where we'll be discussing destroyers, um, positioning and how they interact with other classes uh, here on the map. So without further ado, uh, let's dive in. So as we have been discussing uh, thus far, at least you've seen in the battleship, you've seen in the cruiser video, uh, we've been talking a lot um, about these islands, naturally, but also we've been talking about these kill boxes um, here on the map, which uh, we will get into here shortly. And a lot of the activity um, on this map, of course, revolves around the island setup, and it revolves around uh, those kill boxes. So, if you are new here, uh, one thing I do want to stay up front is that um, this map is pretty uh, mirrors itself very well from a northwest <laughs> I can't draw straight again uh, from a northwest to southeast uh, perspective uh, this map mirrors itself very well so if I draw a line uh, down through here you can see that uh, for the most part uh, this map is pretty much just a mirror you know you have this little additional island here this island's a little bigger than what the island is over here um, so but the most part um, it's pretty straightforward, um, and this is an example of a domination mode where you have three caps, or you might have something like a standard battle where you have a cap here and you have a cap uh, here. Um, so this map mirrors itself from a northwest to southeast perspective, but the map does not mirror itself well from a uh, northeast to southwest perspective. So if I draw a line this way, the map does not mirror itself um, really at all um, to a certain extent because not even the center cap um, in the domination mode is in the center of the map. It's a little offset here. Um, because the reason why I illustrate this is often in big map, um, either the battle you'll be facing um, with the first line we drew across here. You know, when it starts off, you're either, you know, green team here, red team here. Uh, but sometimes as the battle progresses, uh, the map control shifts where all of a sudden the red team controls this part and the green team controls this part. Now, as you can see with the ship setup, uh, this mirrors something much more uh, like a ranked matchup um, where we don't we see we don't have a full uh, 12 uh, ship class, but this is the general spawn area. Spawn is always going to be uh, in this section, this category of the map, but maybe a bit more spread out since you have uh, 12 ships in a random battle. So with that out of the way, let's talk about those kill boxes and then we're going to get into talking about destroyer positioning uh, in this uh, map. So I'm going to draw a the kill boxes. Those are going to be uh, yellow. So let's see, it's something about like this. And then we have the other kill box, which is this basically just this entire cap is a kill box. Um, so you have these two kill boxes and a lot of the activity of uh, ship positioning, so on and so forth, revolves around these two kill boxes uh, because uh, as we've discussed, carrier players, they don't tend to cross. Uh, let's just uh, give you an example. Carrier players don't really tend to draw, uh, go across this line. Um, for the red team, they don't really tend to go across that line. They stay outside the kill boxes, right? Battleship players, um, they tend to go more towards the flank. Well, let's draw it like this instead, I think. They kind of um, do more like this. And it's the same thing over here, where they kind of... It's, it's basically like that. A lot of players are unconscious to this sometimes, that they're unconsciously they're just staying outside of these kill boxes um cruiser players would follow basically about the same principle same lines um, as a battleship player would 
But a lot of players are just unconscious that they are just staying outside of these kill boxes once they've played the map a few times. Um, naturally, you're gonna have new players um, in this map constantly as new players come into the game. Um, and they are going to just kind of go right in since this is a lower tier battle map. It is tier two to tier five. Um, currently, as of update 0 0.10.5, they have um, some ranked matches where you have tier six, tier seven ships on this map. But generally speaking, we're looking at tiers two through five. Uh, on the map big race but you have these kill boxes and destroyers are probably the ones um, that get to take the played well can take advantage of the kill boxes um, maybe more so than other um, ship classes so let's go ahead and just talk about positioning now that we've got the kill boxes discussed with and out of the way so looking at the green team first um as an example, you know, as I said, random battles, you have 12 and it'd be kind of more spread out. But let's say you're a destroyer and you start off on the left flank here. Um, it tends to be that um, you're going to be, maybe there's a forward motion or sometimes you have something kind of like this. Or you break off and do something like this. This is the positioning that I'm going to highlight first and starting off here and it's going to be the same for the enemy team we're going to kind of come down to something like this draw a little x break off maybe something like this and this is really the early phases of the battle now as we've discussed on the map big race it is uh one of the smaller maps in world of warships given the tier but it doesn't take a very long time before uh you're going to start spotting the battleships of the enemy team and the destroyers on the enemy team are going to start spotting your battleships because at this tier you don't tend to have uh, the best concealment um naturally so um so um you spot each other quick because it is a smaller map now why i say this is when we first start off here is as a destroyer player you come down usually when you get around to these areas is sometimes is when you're going to spot a battleship, maybe even a cruiser, um, as you draw closer into this cap. Now, I've shared that uh, these kill boxes, uh, generally speaking, should be avoided the first half of a battle. If the enemy team is uh, also pushing, uh, arriving on the same flank, they're not leaving this, the, this flank open, then you want to be rather con uh, cautious in starting off here. Let the enemy destroyers, in this case, uh, let them be impatient and let them make this mistakes. So one of the biggest things as a destroyer player is uh, that I really like to future in is that uh, patience is key. And as a destroyer player, uh, most enemy destroyer players, uh, destroyer players are kind of impatient, impulsive, like make a decision. Well, if I'm staying dark and I'm really not doing anything, I don't feel like I'm contributing. So they just kind of rush in. Um, and that is how you get to punish an enemy destroyer. And that is especially true on this kill box because this kill box is the worst of the two kill boxes. Um, you might think you're safe with these islands here, but sometimes that just uh, it completely fools you. Um, because as a destroyer player, once you've moved up here, when you come into this kill box, there's only one way out. <laughs> so let's say, for example, uh, we'll use uh, an orange line. Let's say you are this guy and you push into the gap. Now, if the enemy team picks you up, you are you can't go this way, right? You can't go this way, right? It's suicide if you go this way. So that usually means you have to double back and you have to run away. So the enemy team, enemy players already know, well, we've got him cornered. We know exactly where he's going because you got this island back uh, against your back. And generally speaking, they get to land more shots on you because they know you're trapped, you're not getting out unless you have a smoke screen able to go dark but you know even at this tier you begin to run into some destroyer players who have hydroacoustic search and some destroyers at the tier also don't have the best concealment so um once you've moved in here you're kind of trapped there's only one way for you out um so my advice in the positioning when you come up to this cap is simply just observe see what's happening see how the enemy team um, is reacting if they're pushing into the cap or not and then uh, at the tier, you tend to have torpedoes that reload rather uh, quickly. And so I just preemptively dump torpedoes. So you have um, this torpedo alley. Um, you have uh, this torpedo alley. 
if like for example if you were up here because um, sometimes what I tend to do is I come up here and I kind of do this kite and turn out and maybe I slow down kind of waiting to see what's going on but I'm not going to set broadside if you set broadside you're just much more likely to eat uh, torpedoes from the enemy team when you're sitting here but I'm just observing I'm seeing I'm seeing what's happening seeing what enemy destroyers am I potentially going to be go up against? And then I'm like, oh, it's this destroyer. He has hydro. I don't have hydro. It'd be really dumb of me to push in on him. Uh, just those general type of things. So when you have these uh, torpedo alleys, um, you just have to be mindful of how um, to avoid. You have this little one here. It doesn't tend to get used as much because that means you're committed. You've gone in. But you basically, it's like the, <laughs> what do you call it? The Bermuda Triangle. It's the triangle of death in this kill box, right? So I've seen cruiser players, I've seen battleship players just kind of like, oh, I'm just going to keep going. And all of a sudden they find themselves eating a bunch of torpedoes. They're flooding, they hit use their damage control party. The cruisers that are also stationed out here, then spam them with HE, set them on fire, or maybe destroyer pops smoke, um, sets you on fire. And now you're permanently burning until your uh, crew is able to put the fire out. It's just a bad deal. So you got to exercise patience um, at this cap. Um, find out what the enemy team is doing. And then you can move on from there. Um, because if you let the enemy destroyer make the mistake, he pushes too far into the kill box, comes closer in at you, your team that's stationed here knocks him out, he's dead, then you're able to step into the cap. And then you can begin to apply, uh, put pressure uh, on the enemy team. But you gotta find out first, see what the enemy team is up to before you think about entering this cap, before you consider um, just diving in. Um, you gotta be patient. So. But we talked about this flank, so let's talk about some other positioning. So, as, you know, as an example, uh, we've got this center cap here, or if it was a standard battle, this would just be kind of an open area. Um, so you also have the opportunity to, uh, if you're a destroyer player, uh, I don't tend to recommend going out here in the this kill box at the starting of the battle. So maybe you find yourself, oop, gotta change the color. So you might find yourself as an example, moving from here up into this cap, because you've got this nice island here, right? Um, it works well. Um, I'll come up. I don't just nose in and hit the island. I'll just kind of come up. Well, I have my bow either facing north or south because I want to or northeast or southwest. I want to be in a position if an image destroyer decides to yellow uh, the first minutes of the match. I can disengage. I'm not sitting there. Um, pants down, eat a bunch of torpedoes as he rounds the corner of the island. But this is a good uh, position to work from because you also, as a destroyer player, when you're in uh, dives behind this island, is that you get to provide spotting for your team into this kill box. You give your team information. So this is kind of like the informational hub island, let's put it that way. Um, where you're sitting here, you're either taking the cap or at least contesting the cap if there's an image short also pushed into it. But you have this view range uh, where you get to look down into the kill box and see what the enemy team's up to. It gives you your team sitting outside information of knowing what's going on, what's happening. Uh, but naturally, as kill boxes go, it's also a torpedo uh, alley as well. This is kind of poorly drawn. You get the point, right? Enemy destroyer goes up here, you know, you can kind of you know, put your nose out, you dump torpedoes down this way as maybe a cruiser shore player, you catch them off guard. And the same for this flank as well as they're pushing up here. So that is a definitely slanted <laughs> uh, line. I'm not an art major. That would be Mrs. Flimsy, not myself. Um, so this, um, we'll call it the angry plus sign, <laughs> although it has other meanings as well. But uh, you get this other uh, torpedo alley happening. So you know how we were also, we were talking about this torpedo box, and then you've got uh, this torpedo alley, then you've got this torpedo alley. Wow, I'm really suffering today. Right, in the beginning opening minutes of the match, when you have cruisers and destroyers just spamming torpedoes like this, it's not wise to move in just yet. Like I said, be patient, find out what the enemy team is doing, and then go from there. Because even when you push into this cap, you find out, oh, this cap's being contested. The destroyer is likely on this side of the island, or he might be up here somewhere in the kill box up here, hoping to perhaps throw some torpedoes down this way, as an example. And the same could be said for you. If you came up here, 
you could be looking to throw some torpedoes down this way, as an example. So that's why it's important to hug the island. So you see how I was saying if you have your bow or uh, facing northeast or southwest uh, in this position, when you're kind of sitting close to the island, not grounded yourself, but if this type of torpedo action is happening, then look, you're gonna, the island's protecting you when you're sitting in this position versus sitting further back. So it helps uh, serve a uh, good purpose there as well. Now, of course that can change if an enemy shore gets really aggressive, it comes all the way over here, then throws torpedoes up at you. But usually the shores here are too concerned what's happening straight across them versus what's happening up here in the center area. And like I said, you do have the option of possibly, uh, maybe you, uh, let's say, let's say it was this guy here. I'm going up into this corner area. I need to draw my little X. Same for the enemy team destroyer. We'll compare that at the same time. Because most of the time, um, more than 50% of the time, when there's a destroyer contesting the cap, he's going to be back here behind this island. That's usually, generally speaking, that's where they are. Not as many come up to this uh, corner uh, of the cap, but um, know that is when you're playing domination mode, this is something where you see that there might be a destroyer out here in this area. Um, but let's say you were on a standard battle where you don't have the center cap, then usually as a destroyer, you're just kind of, you're gathering information. You're kind of nosing around, seeing, seeing what's happening. Um, you know, because you kind of have that center line, right, through this way, where you're just kind of seeing what's happening before you really decide to cross um, the battle line, if you will. So let's talk about uh, the other flank. So you also have, uh, what I like about being a destroyer on this side, is you come up here, and then you've got this nice cove uh, to sit in. It's naturally, it, you know, kind of curves up, goes out, so it means you're less likely e to eat uh, torpedoes. At the same time, you can also uh, go and dive this island. Now it looks a little different for uh, the red team here because they don't have that cove island. I just kind of like it because it feels like it's a way to just uh, come out when needed. They just basically have to go park behind this island. Um, and uh, if they want to come out, it's... I don't know, it's just, it feels comfortable. It's like a little cushion for you to land on, if you will. And then they can come up here, park it behind this island. Now, the wild card factor on this flank, um, what I like to do as a destroyer player is I like um, to go for this area um, being, let's see how do I draw that, this area. Because it's like you're trying, it's like, <laughs> I feel like a bit of a more of a dork today, uh, but it's like the high ground, you know, in Star Wars, all right, Obi-Wan and Anakin. If you're a destroyer and you claim the high ground and you beat the other destroyer, um, that means you secure the outer flank because as a destroyer player, let's say you were on the green team and you take control of this area, all of a sudden, the enemy team's battleships that are coming, battleships cruisers coming up to support they're not feeling so confident on this flank. They're feeling a little bit more vulnerable because they know they just lost a destroyer player uh, up here, one of their teammates, and there's a destroyer who's undetected now running around up here that could be throwing torpedoes their way. So what do they do? They turn around and they run. Or they might, or the cruiser player, you know, might die for the island as an example. Um, so it's dangerous for them if they decide. So that's why if you uh win the outer flank here as you know if, you know let's say you just you know this wasn't a domination battle it was a standard battle and you win the outer flank uh you've set your team up for this flank very well um depending on which um which side you are on whether you'd be spawning on the red team or the green team um here in this example so that's why i like uh this uh, area up here uh, as a destroyer player when I get the advantage now you can see that it's a very far Stretch so typically it's best suited for fast destroyers uh, maybe more gunboat destroyer Who has a decent reload time to go up here and knock out the enemy destroyer because sometimes Destroyer players aren't thinking about this actually being the high ground as it were and You can move up and potentially even catch a destroyer like here off guard 
and provide spotting and valuable information for your team, your cruisers, your battleships, which are moving really slow at this tier, information as they come up to support you on the flank. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a general breakdown of positioning, I would say, as a shores. Uh, I really don't want to make this video as long as the previous videos, but um, this really gets the, the heart of it, because once you go from these positions, you find out what the enemy team's doing, what ships are you up against, where are the primary, primarily uh, the bulk of the enemy team, which flank are they pushing, um, and then you go from there. Because that's when it comes more down to uh, decision making um, by your team and yourself uh, for how you plan to counter um, and uh, best win uh, for victory for the outcome of your team. Now let's talk about how uh, destroyers interact with other classes uh, on this map. Um, before I do say that, uh, I do need to say this again. Uh, I just realized I'm going to say it a little bit earlier. Um, is that these islands, if you are new here, I have been trying to beat this in uh, to those who have watched the previous videos, uh, especially the cruiser one, is that these islands, and if you've seen this, uh, know what I'm about to say, you can tune out for a minute, uh, that these islands all have this high, um, high points in the center of them, right? You can kind of see that as they got the, the art team, you know, on this map, they've put some snow, snow cap, or maybe it's just the gray from the mountain. But all these islands have a somewhat future where they have this high zone in the middle. And you're like, okay, well, that's basic information. Why are you telling me that? Well, I'm telling you that because that's not true for the outer perimeter of these islands. Uh, these islands, as they go down towards the sea, they taper off. They go down at a, a general decline. And what that means is, as a destroyer player, as a cruiser player, you get to uh, use the corner of these islands to uh, HE spam, get some volleys in, undetected. So let's say you are a destroyer without smokescreen at this tier, um, as an example. Um, that means you don't have to expend a smokescreen. Let's say you only have battles progressed, you only have one or two smokescreens left, and you don't feel like it's time to utilize another smokescreen. Then just utilize the corner of the islands to throw HE. Uh, uh, damage, try to set a fire, enemy battleship. I do this all the time when I'm on this map, is utilizing the corner of these islands against the enemy team because being able to fire at an enemy opponent without him seeing you um, is awesome. <laughs> so just uh, keep that in mind as you're a destroyer player, as you're roaming around um, here on the map of Big Race. So let's talk about how uh, the destroyers interact with other classes uh, on the map. Now, as we've discussed, um, cruiser uh, carrier play is um, pretty straightforward. Carriers either sit here and spawn, or they go generally down to this island. They get a little bit closer to the battle, what's happening, but then they're even farther away from what's happening up here. Uh, some carrier players, I just see they go sit in the corner. Um, or a wise carrier player, once the team has secured a flank and the enemy teams are treating, they push with their team. Um, Generally at this tier, ex uh, except uh, excluding the soon to be coming uh, Russian carriers, is your concealment as a carrier player at this tier is rather low. We're talking about tier four carriers. Um, so that's just something you have to keep in mind on the smaller map, a big race. But what is it? Why am I saying telling you this uh, as a destroyer player? Well, I'm telling you this as a destroyer player because that's where you can generally expect the enemy planes to come from. Um, that's why this area. Especially if there is a carrier player uh, on this map and you're a destroyer player and you stroll up to this kill box and an enemy carrier decides to send planes through the kill box and he catches you in the kill box and all the enemy ships that are sitting outside the kill box catch you in the kill box, it means death generally. So that is another reason why these kill boxes, uh, especially this one, can be even more deadly when there's a carrier player um, in the battle. Especially at this tier, you have some that drop down, where you have maybe even two carriers um, in a battle. Uh, two on enemy team, two on your team. Uh, so you just have to be mindful, um, because they will just kind of, if you're trying to move up all disguised on the flank, or try to be stealthy, and they're flying over and they spot you, um, it can, can kill flanking opportunities, so on and so forth. So... Be mindful of that, especially for this kill box. Um, that destroyer players, uh, destroyers don't interact very well with carriers on this map, 
especially so in this kill box. Um, generally speaking, it's harder for a carrier player to land uh, hits on a destroyer player if they catch you off guard. That makes it a little bit easier, uh, especially since as of 0.10.5, they have the rocket changes where now you have the two to three second where after you click to launch your rockets, you get the machine gun volley and then your rockets launch. So it's a little bit harder to hit destroyers now. Um, I think they did that. Wargaming made that decision not for destroyer players who were really griping about rocket planes, but for submarines uh, as Jingles uh, shared that sentiment and uh, thought as well. Um, so yeah, just be mindful, see what's happening in the sky. Uh, and then when terms of battleship players, uh, how destroyers interact with battleships, it's not that big of a deal, generally speaking, because um, battleships tend to play more passively. Uh, at least the first half of the battle, they play back behind um, this island. Uh, or these islands, kind of how I was saying how they unconsciously stay outside the kill box uh, without knowing it. They kind of just play uh, back in uh, this area. Uh, for at least for the first half of the battle. So that means, generally speaking, as a destroyer player, battleships aren't going to be the first uh, class that you're going to interact with and attack. It's usually going to be your destroyers and your cruisers is what you're going to go up against first. And that is especially true uh, on this map in Big Race. So it's really not till the second half of the battle where you might be interacting with battleships much more. Or you get that battleship player who just decides to yell into a kill box. Um, and then you get to utilize the islands to uh, just completely assassinate a battleship as he rounds the corner. Uh, so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, it's not really till the later half of the battle where you're interacting with battleships more. As uh, more players on the enemy team has died, more players on your team have died, then the battlefield begins to shift where you might even see that uh, northeast to southwest um, where it shifts from uh, to that position uh, of the battle line if your team controls more of this area and the red team for example would control more of this area uh, interaction with cruisers like i said a wise cruiser player will utilize the corner of the islands like i said they will also roll up you know for example to here support their enemy destroyers as they investigate find out what's going on before they even think about uh, entering the kill box um, but they'll try to use, utilize the corner of the islands a lot. Now, how that can work well for you, especially in the last half of the battle, when you have a cruiser player who's just kind of camping the corner of an island, like, you know, let's say, um, there's a, let's say there's a cruiser here, and he's spamming HE at one of your friendly battleships, and you're a destroyer player, and you just come down around, and you dump a bunch of torps into his side, because he's not paying attention, he's tunnel visioned on the, your battleship teammate out here, then you kind of get to be able to pull more of those assassination kills against cruiser players um, here on the map at Grace. Um, yeah, and it just, again, you don't generally want to go out here in the first half of the battle. Uh, you kind of find out what's going on, and as there are less enemy teams, uh, less enemy players, then the kill box, this kill box isn't as threatening per se, um, especially for, and I'm saying this as a destroyer player, for destroyers, it's still a big threat if you're a cruiser or battleship and you enter this and just still opposing uh, cruisers and enemy battleships uh, on an enemy team. Um, but you get a little bit more freedom to move around, you get a little more stealth, there aren't as many ships possible to detect you um, as enemy team loses their ships and teammates. And uh, destroyers. Well, in interacting destroyer interaction with destroyers, you just have to be patient, like I said. Usually, most uh, World of Warship destroyer players tend to be impatient, um, where they're not able to um, play patiently uh, for the, the first half of the battle. Um, some even less, where they just kind of yellow the first, within the first five minutes of the battle. And you're kind of playing for those opportunities to be able to punish the enemy destroyer. Uh, to your advantage and being able, able to take them out. Um, again, try to do your best in utilizing the corners of the islands, utilizing um, smoke screens, and being mindful of those um, torpedo alleys. So this is a really, oh, we're a little further away than I So this is a torpedo alley. 
Uh, let's see, I'm trying to think how I want to phrase this. I don't want to draw the line here. This is really the main torpedo alley. There's not much. You can have some if there's a destroyer player who thinks there's someone out on the flank. They want to kill them before they come around. But this is kind of the, the number one torpedo alley for this flank. Um, we talked about this being a torpedo alley. We talked about this being a torpedo alley. And then this being a torpedo alley. And then this. Uh, how did I phrase that? Coming down this way. And then this way. And then this area is a torpedo alley. Um, well, actually, I had it I had it drawn a little bit differently than that. Where we had, uh, yeah, going kind of like somewhat like this. Um, so yeah, so you just have to be, yeah, these actually kind of need to be a bit longer here, but these are the generally, uh, the torpedo alleys that you're going to find. So it's helpful as a destroyer player. Um, if you take a torpedo in the first half of the battle, that already puts you at disadvantage against the enemy destroyer. If, since he has the leg up on you, having more of your H, his health pool compared to your health pool. So just be mindful of enemy torpedoes. Most torpedoes at this tiers two through five don't have the range to reach very far. It's usually around six kilometers. Most destroyers, um, you know, without the exception of the ranked battles season right now, where you have to also tier six and tier seven on this battle, you get to eight kilometers and maybe a tiny bit more. Um, but you got to be mindful of those torpedoes because that's that might be even the first thing you see before you even see the enemy destroyer. You just see torpedoes coming at you, um, or if you just decide to smoke up, uh, sitting broadside here, and all of a sudden, you know, there's all these angry torpedoes coming at you and kill you. Um, so you just have to play wise. You get, you know, if you're in a smoke screen, uh, smoke screens are torpedo magnets. Uh, either be bow in or you know at an angle so if torpedoes do pop up you can kind of begin to maneuver away present as small as target as possible towards torpedoes coming inbound on you um yeah and just play patient um, when you're going up against uh, enemy destroyers here on the map big race so i think that really went uh, that's just going to wrap it up uh, for us today uh, i don't want to go into too much more detail i think between the other uh, videos um, we've done so far on the map. Uh, I think you guys have a pretty good idea of what I've been saying, I hope. Um, and then part six, uh, which will be the next video, we'll be uh, discussing, uh, I'll be having clips of this map, seeing Big Race in action, um, as it were. I hope to do that next Monday. Um, I may have to be, might have to be leaving, preparing to leave for a conference. Uh, that week work related right now I'm on vacation um, so if I don't get that video up next Monday my apologies it will follow uh, the following Monday because those videos do take time because it's basically 15 to 30 second clips of carriers battleships cruisers to shores utilizing the things that I've been talking about through parts uh, one through five and so I do want to make sure that I put the best effort in that video as possible uh, versus um, rushing and getting it out um, as, uh, tomorrow, uh, since this video, I am recording this video as of today, when it comes out, uh, tomorrow I'm, uh, leaving for several days, um, and going uh, a bit further away from home base. So, um, it's going to be a bit tricky between coming back and then getting ready to go for a conference. So regardless, if you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't give it a thumbs down, subscribe. If you want to see more, if you have already subscribed, uh, thanks so much. I really appreciate it as it's cool to see how the channel continues to grow. So until next time, take care.